adaptive phycoanalyst, a seaweed farmer. Bibit is the Indonesian word for vegetative seaweed propagules, otherwise known as cuttings. These are often erroneously referred to as seedlings. So what is Bibinet all about? Bibinet will be a seaweed industry stakeholder collaboration that can alleviate farmer risk and enhance farmer rewards in Indonesia and other tropical countries. BBNet will support networking and capacity building of existing organizations. It will not reinvent the wheel. One for all and all for one. BBNet facilities will produce both goods and services. BBNet facilities will comprise sterile cultivar banks that feed biomass through nursery systems to commercial farms with farmer planting schedules in mind. BBNet goods will comprise healthy and certified biomass that comes as close as possible to meeting farmer and processor needs. And BBNet services will ensure proper management and specification of hatchery and nursery stocks traced through entire value chains. What are BBNet attributes? BBNet will blend precision and adaptive phyconomy. BBNet will catalyze consolidation of the cultivar core that must be a foundation of responsible, profitable, tropical phyconomy. BBNet must integrate into farm ecoscapes and local ecosystems. The BBNet system must be sustainable and anti-fragile. Cultivar identities should be traceable and certifiable from source to end user. Cultivar biomass must be productive and profitable as, as commercial seaweed crops. And cultivar types must be practical and robust as biomass foundations for seaweed farms. Cultivar should enhance food security and biosecurity of seaweed farms. Farmer needs and biomass source analyses are ongoing as a first step in building BBNet. So where in Indonesia is seaweed farmed and what is it worth? Seaweeds have been farmed in most of Indonesia, as you can see in this map. Industry estimates of production for the three major farm genera is on the order of about 12 to 15,000 metric tons per month of Capophycus, 10 to 12,000 tons a month of Gracilaria, and 2 to 3,000 tons a month of Eucuma, so that would be a total of about 25 to 30,000 metric tons per month. About 50% of the cap of ficus is farmed in Kalimantan Utara. About 25% of cap of ficus and 80 to 90% of Eucuma is farmed in Sulawesi. About 25% of cap of ficus and around 10 to 20% of Eucuma is farmed in areas throughout Indonesia. Most Gracilaria is farmed in South Sulawesi and Central Java. The area enclosed by the dotted blue line here can be tremendously productive in East Indonesia, but logistics costs impair links to value chains from that area. Confirmed data are unavailable, but informed estimates place current production volumes in the range of about 300 to 360,000 dry tons per annum for all of Indonesia. Now this is by informal industry consensus. By official government estimates, 
current production volumes of all types of seaweed from Indonesia are on the order of over 10 million wet tons per annum, and that would be over 1 million dry tons. That level of production puts about half a billion US dollars, more than 7 trillion rupiah, into the accounts of seaweed farmers around the seashores of Indonesia. So what farmer needs would be met by BBNet? Well, to begin with, upwards of 50 to 60,000 Indonesian farm households need what BBNet proposes to offer. One of the most important is cost-effective recovery from seasonal crop failures, which are often associated with the ice ice malady. Some BBNet benefits well, there's best biomass for farm initiation, optimum crop mix for best prices, and rapid recovery from crop failures, as I just pointed out. In addition, farmers should get more crop cycles per year, better productivity per cycle, and millions of rupiah higher earnings annually. The bottom line is, billions of rupiah in annual income for farm families. What cultivars would be produced by BBNet? Well, there's an expanding selection of globally available red, green, and brown seaweed cultivars. There are many cultivars that exist, are being commercially farmed, but are not readily available to farmers around the world. In all cases, with BBNet, cultivars would be identified and traced using molecular taxonomy techniques. What is the timeline and budget for BBNet? Well, BBNet is currently seeking funds for a two-year, $250,000 U.S. dollar development plan that would build on existing facilities and nursery locations. BBNet development is tied to Tropical Phyconomy Coalition development, as manifested by the workshop for which I made this presentation. You can follow some of what's going on by looking at the website at phyconomy.org. Please help us to build the BBNet initiative. Thank you for watching this presentation.